everybody and welcome to episode 24 of Run to the Hills. You may notice that the episode number has been cut out for uh, the last few weeks because I seem to be incapable of saying the right episode. Um, so I've been assured that it's 24 this week and um, hopefully I got that right and it won't be edited. Hi Tim, how are you? I'm good, Eddie. Well done on the numbering. Your numbering is coming along beautifully. I know. I reckon I'm probably about year three standard maths right now. Yeah, I reckon you, you're all over it. So congratulations on the mathematical and arithmetic capabilities. I'm soundly impressed. Have you had a good week? Yeah, really super week. Well, I'm in the midst of a two week half term. I can't complain because my kids are still at school here in France. So I'm really, really sorry, but they are now at home and um, I am juggling. I am being a taxi driver between the ski slopes home and then providing, as you just saw, 3000 calories of food I give them and then they go quiet for a couple of hours and then I have to provide more food and then I have to drive the next lot back up to the piece. But I'm not complaining in any way because right. I'm so lucky that they've got activities to do. Life for them is relatively normal and I just have to fit in my training, my work around their schedules. But I'm, but that's fine. My goodness, that's fine. That's better than being at home. So normally in half term, I take like a rest week. I'm just going to just just to carry on but what I normally do um and I have a sort of quieter week but I decided I'm in a really good training flow at the moment so I am trying to keep I'm hitting about 18 to 20 hours worth of winter volume training which is the most I've hit since way back in the middle ages when I was a triathlete so I'm trying to keep that up it's and I've made a very detailed plan I've written many schedules in my very full diary um, of how I'm going to fit all the training in. And I'm on day three, I'm managing it, but I have to say it's any parent juggling training and kids is hard work. The hardest thing I often find is not the actual training, it's the recovery and then the eating afterwards. I did my session about three hours ago and I've had a cup of tea. Oh, well, that's not good. That's not that's good. No, that's no good. I, I did, that's not I professional. Went, I went for a run this morning. I had breakfast straight afterwards, and I'm already like an hour and a half later. I'm I'm got a big block of cheese out, and I'm making my way through that. I'm still waiting for my delivery of vegan chia charge bars, which I'm, has well, promised that's about. A, three well, and that's an interesting question, and I'm glad you brought it up. Did you like that sort of government minister style response? Where's the PowerPoint? Yeah, we've got, um, we're actually having a delivery later this week of some new bandanas. And I just wanted to wait till I got the new bandanas and then I could send you the bandanas and the vegan, the new vegan flapjacks. It's like an advertising break now, isn't it? I could send you the new vegan flapjacks and the bandanas all in a one -er. So probably sending them. Oh, now I feel guilty. That's well, so good. Yeah, yeah you, you need to work on that sincerity a little bit there, Eddie. <laughs> Have so, you been running? Did I see a I, mega run on Strava? Well, I did. I did a run on. I did a run on Sunday, and then I've been because I, I felt I was like I was the most miserable little runner on Sunday. It was horrible. So I went running Sunday. It was cold, and I was running about snail's pace. I had to go through a bunch of water to start with, which is kind of up to my top of my legs. If I don't Didn't need to be more descriptive than that, but let's say all the equipment got wet. And um, so I was pretty wet straight off. And then I like did another 20 odd K. So did, oh. I, was just shy, I was just shy 24 K, but I wanted to do 26 or 27, but I was a miserable little runt. I mean, I was moaning the whole way around and just as well there was, I was on my own because anyone else would have- <laughs> I was gonna say, who were you moaning to? Just, yeah, just any, anyone else, anyone else would have just dropped me. So I, th and I think there was a kind of a combination of uh, doing a lot of uh, lunges on Friday and then just not having my head in the game. So I determined that I should run again today. So I've been out for 10K today and I've kind of straightened myself out a little bit. So now I've got my head back and I need to work on my music choices as well because there was it was definitely a game of two halves today. Um, and we had uh, Elton John ballads for the first half and I was like, Ooh, that's I no. I should have just think. jumped in. I should have just yeah. jumped in the river. So then on the way back, I like put some uh, old school queen on and uh, that got a lot better and faster. So I had a lovely morning. Thank you. Good work. And who are we chatting to today? So you're going to chat to a really nice guy called Gary Thwaites, who I've known for a number of years. Um, we're not like uh, best buddies or anything, but we're definitely, you know, one of those guys that you see around. Is that bad? Well, I'm not supposed to say that. So... 
He's going to be crying. Well, he's just one of these guys that, you know, you see uh, lots of races and stuff like that in the Northeast. And I know, and, and over, you know, in Yorkshire and in the lakes, he's a really good marathon runner and he's done lots of road, road marathons. And I know him through the Northeast Marathon Club, uh, which I used to belong to some time ago. And he's got a few different interesting things on the go, including his YouTube channel, The Outdoor POV. And I just want you to have a good chat with him and uh, see what information you can draw out. So I'm going to, with that introduction, I'm going to let you two crack on. Here's Gary Thwaites and Eddie Sutton. Hi, Gary. Welcome to Run to the Hills podcast. And thank you for agreeing to Twitter away with me um, as we carry on with this podcast. And to all the listeners out there, Gary and I, we have just met 10 minutes ago on Zoom. You met me, you met the whole family having their yeah, lunch. Um, and so I am totally going to interview you. And in, I know very little about you, yeah. apart from your choice of jumper. And um, so I'm really excited. So can you start, tell us a little bit about I had a look at your YouTube channel. Okay. Very relaxing. It's lovely. <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about that, where that came from, um, what, what you're doing with that? Oh, well, there's, there's, there's two YouTube channels now, actually, but one, the main one is the Outdoor POV, which started w during lockdown, really. Um, I was running home one day and I saw some people kind of doing some antisocial behaviour and I thought, oh, if I had a camera, I, mean, I could kind of film this. And it was like, serendipity as I got home my wife said you should go and run around with the GoPro or something but for completely different reasons and um <laughs> that was it that's that's how we started really um I love and, that. that's right. you were crime busting yeah <laughs> <laughs> Young kid, there was like a bunch of, I don't know if it happened where you are but when lockdown first started in England there was a little kind of rise of anti-social behavior it was it was it was a bit kind of strange locally to me anyway um and luckily that's kind of gone back to normal levels uh whereabouts are you based gary because i'm loving the accent mine's more indian uh newcastle uh, <laughs> <laughs> i'm a little bit, little bit south of newcastle uh east durham so <gasps> specifically just near a place called hartleypool but durham yes. i know you studied in durham of uh did, the, yeah it's close uh, to my heart yeah and uh, so, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I'm, Carry on about your yeah, crime busting. Oh, yes. Well, that never really <laughs> happened. But um, we just kind of, I just started going out with the dog filming runs. Um, and that kind of uh, evolved and kind of went up on the moors and different places, like over the lakes when I was kind of doing my training for the Bob Graham round attempt. Um, and that was that. Then I started doing all this kind of relaxation stuff. Uh, but I felt that it was kind of cluttering up that channel. So... Mm. A separate channel just for for that um and that's fantastic you just go and sit somewhere for a few hours and read a book and point the camera and hope nobody pat you on the shoulder and asks you what you're doing and stuff like that and uh it's great yeah i really enjoy that but yeah the pov running stuff um and kit reviews and little tutorials and stuff like that um because i have you know i don't know if you're the same but i have so many people have all these uh gadgets and they just and they don't they know what they do a couple of things but they don't know how to put a course on or change the data screens or this or that so i thought i'll just do some little tutorials so helpful because it's the first thing i do with anything technology anything i need to do with watches or anything or something that's not working yeah. you google yeah. and then you look for the shortest clearest youtube clip yeah. <laughs> that's english um uh that is gonna help me how to do it because nearly always as well you're in a rage because you can't load the yeah. map on your watch and you've yeah, left it for two, and two like hours said, before it starts. It is, it's a 20 minute video. You're just going, I'm not going to watch that. But if it's like a five or a 10 minute video, then that's what we're trying to do. But um, yeah, it's hard. My goodness me. It's a hard kind of platform to try and reach people on YouTube. It's so busy. There's so many different creators out there. But um, yeah, it's, it's been quite fun. It's, it's a hobby, really. I've not earned any mm. kind of money from it or anything like that. But it probably takes up currently at least anyway, it takes up more time than my job <laughs> Being a, what's your what's your real job well a real job right there's a again this is a multi-angled job I, I, the main job is it's quite a niche business but i make donation boxes for museums and galleries um and that's it's it's pretty niche but then i do metal hangers and stuff too for hanging your medals after race events or 
whatever kind of sport you can so do you that. actually make them or do you design them or do you sort of outsource it it's a bit of everything really um we, we design them all um and then if it's say, a specialist piece of metal or plastic we'll outsource that outsource that um but if it's wood we'll do that on a workshop um and then usually we kind of just assemble everything and then ship it out and it's it's really weird you know we've got a little unit in east durham um and we ship all over the world it's you know it's 99 percent uk based but we get these emails from people say it could be singapore and they ask for like our southeast asia representative and stuff like that and it's me and my wife and Rex. i'll just go and get them hang on yeah, a yeah. second <laughs> it's literally me and my wife and the dog and uh the rest of it is subbed out to people that's it's, it's good so how has it been in lockdown for you then oh my goodness me well it's been we're in a funny situation because technically we can open um, as a business. I think that's the advice, but all of our customers are shut. Every all the yeah, museums that's what I was thinking. There's no museums. There's nothing, yeah. and charities are not obviously getting a huge amount of no, no. Donation. And also, pe- people don't want cash anymore. This is what we're finding that of course we are repurposing. We we do we work with some companies that um, do the contactless card payment. Uh, uh, for, for the donation boxes so we install the, the contact wow. devices in yep. the donation boxes um so yeah we, we're kind of trying to repurpose that some old stock and stuff like that but it's yeah things are going on in the background but nothing like what we used to be kind of doing and that's why you know when, when this, this came along and the, the metal hangers it's it, i just thought it was kind of healthy to have 10 different <laughs> avenues mm. to oh well, I really like doing lots of different things too because yeah. it just keeps you interested and us as runners as well we always like to be working on I think that's a trait that all us runners have we like to be working on something and feel like we're getting better or improving yeah. something or doing something we want to you know we're not ones to like kind of just sit and um, but do, you do, the jobs, do you do the jobs that you want to do over the jobs maybe that should be done prioritize i'm terrible i am terrible at the i've still got this 45 minutes worth of french listening i need to do because long story but you get so much funding if you pay your french tax to have french lessons it's very good so you pay tax and you get a thousand hours or something like that of french lessons but you have to also do all this online study i've only got 45 minutes left i've had six months to do it and i've got to do it by this weekend and i still haven't done it (laughs) i don't quite like oh it's important so boring but if there's something like this that i want to do always time always yeah. time and there's yeah. always time for running. always time for running oh so goodness. tell us a little bit we better talk about running okay. i get told off again tell us a little bit about your running background go like right back right. everyone loves the backstory where it's gone where you are now well i used to you know we did a bit of school but that was like when we were kind of forced to really i think running for a lot of people back then with punishment um and then but my earliest memory of running, say, competitively was for uh, the air cadets, the local air cadets. Um, I did a cross country for those guys. And then that was it, really. But it has been a, a bit of a thread um, through my life. I do remember running, but uh, mm. nothing kind of specific. And then it kind of, I suppose, it kicked off with just work colleagues running. And I did some 10K in London. And then I did the Windsor Half Marathon. That was good. That was quite good. But what I would do is literally, I would do an event, and then I would detrain for about six months, and then think, this oh is classic, goodness. classic. Oh my goodness, I've got the Great North running a month. <laughs> I need to get fit, and that was literally a yo-yo like that for yeah, it could have been a decade to be honest. And I think I had a really, for me, I was really disappointed with a particular Great North run, and um, then I decided to kind of up the ante. And then, long story short, Steve Cram put a marathon on in Sunderland uh so I thought well from going never ever want to run a marathon uh to thinking well it's in Sunderland it starts at the stadium of light and finishes at the stadium of light you pick up your medal in the stadium it was like well this is <gasps> this is the dream are yeah, you a Sunderland my... are you a Sunderland supporter well, yeah I don't go and watch them or anything anymore um but yeah that's if I had to pick a if that, that's my team yeah yeah so I just thought we'll do it and um like classic, most people. I trained. I trained for three and a half hours, which I think is about. You tr- oh, you try. I thought you meant your whole training was three and a half hours. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, I, t- I took it. I had an app, 
and I just have to tick off these things on an app and I, and I did that but I, I, so I, I think it was like eight minute miles but classic I did the first half at about seven and a half minute mile and, and then fell to peace fell to pieces and um, limped in at three and a half hours so I was pretty pleased with that and then that was it and it was I think it was fundraising I was trying to do lots of marathons for more neuro disease and um, that led that kind of made me find the trails I, I joined the marathon club northeast marathon club and that was great they, they did lots of low cost events but I, I was still trying to find lots of uh, different events and then I stumbled across the hard most people and um, that was that yeah after we found the hard most people it was like my goodness me there's all these other marathons that aren't on tarmac and and, and, and then like again I'm just the same as so many other people you do a trail marathon then it's a 50k, then it's a 50 mile, then it's a 100 mile. And I do, some people are doing 200 miles now. I don't think um, I've got the motivation. So what, 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 are the, what are the sort of races that you've done, Gary? And what are your sort of aspirational races? Oh, my goodness me. Um, so the, 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 long, the long races, Lakeland 100, um, Hard Moors 110. Um, I've done all the Hard Moors series, the 60 to 55. Um, I've done quite a few of the, the long distance walking stuff. They're brilliant because they're like, I love those. It's like 10 pounds. Oh, I loved those in England. Yeah. Here's a piece of paper. We'll see you in three days. And a pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little, that's it. You have to kind of punch it. Yeah. Uh, oh my goodness. The, the, the long distance walking association, but you know, you have to be pretty confident with the route because they don't hold your hand. There's no ribbon or there's no tapes or signs. You just off you go. Um, if anybody doesn't have any experience of these, once COVID is over, they are brilliant. Yeah. Sort of entry into ultra, or if you just want an adventure or something different with your mates, and you pay like oh, two pounds or something, and you get written instructions. They're not normal. It's not normal English, is it? It's like yeah. all abbreviated. Yeah. Sometimes right, sometimes not. Well, yeah. be, and you have to follow these written instructions. And when you're on the route and it's all going well, you're there. And then the minute you go off the route, you could be anywhere. <laughs> Where's the style with the bush that you have to pull the third exactly. twig yeah. and <laughs> it's very famous five but then they have these lovely checkpoints and they're all run by the sweetest oldest deers and it's very low-key and often very near you there's one and you can find like local trails and stuff I used to do them a lot when I lived in England and I was getting into ultras and it was like a really good way to up your mileage with no there's no uh, I mean I used to obviously used to try and like be the first one home yeah obviously yeah. but there's no no one's interested well you don't you know, even all... i think if you I was do they do a time to... yeah they do do a time some of them do times but some of them they're just you get a time but you could you, you nobody wins uh, somebody no there's no there's no like winner in fact it's an, almost not really approved of is it it's like have you not had all those sandwiches at the checkpoint because you really should have the soup then the sandwiches yeah. Yeah. And then the if anybody, if anybody's in the northeast and they get a chance to do the Durham Dales challenge and the longer one, it takes you to Middleton Teesdale, and that has to be the best checkpoint I've ever <gasps> been in my life. You, you go in there, it's a, like a U. Last time I did it, at least it was like a U-shaped array of tables, and you just kind of shuffled around them, picking up various <laughs> treats along we're the way. Fan we're fantasizing about checkpoints. You can tell we've not been done any races for such a long time. Oh, that feeling. Um, so what's been your best ultra so far? That's a tough one. I suppose um, the one I enjoyed, it was, I enjoyed it and I was really, I really struggled. Probably the 100 was... Um, mm. I knew you were going to say that. Tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> but it all went well until I saw Timid, how town and then after that my quads well we went to Fusedale actually after Fusedale did you eat a dodgy tear charge bar you could blame <laughs> it on that <laughs> yeah that was, that was it but so I came into How Town and it was I was doing really well and then you got a long climb for Fusedale and yeah then, oh, I'm kind of blanking on what the name of the reservoir is before you get to Mardale Kent hey. um is it Kentmere or somewhere like that like reservoir yeah, but I can't remember after what my goodness me. It's a long drag. There's two long drags then, isn't, uh, isn't there, after that, that is hard, hard work. Well, I think I probably walked 50% of it after my deal. Um, but I did, you know, I did really well. Um, didn't achieve the time I wanted, but as, a, as mm. an event, I thought it was the perfect, it was big enough to feel like you're part of something special, but it was small enough to still feel kind of intimate. Um, and, and that you're out there on your own. You're not sort of like... Yeah. You I really do have moments when you really are truly out in nature. and When you, you, um, when you come into places like Ambleside, 
it's like the whole place knows you're doing it. Um, and it was just magic. It was really good, really good day. Um, for the road, I know this is one of the hills. I really enjoyed London Marathon. I think I keep uh, mm. I keep trying to get into that. And luckily, we we still achieved the kind of good for age time. So, yeah, you, I'm good. I'm down on the good for age list this year. Oh, Are you down oh, this year? Hello, I sense a competition coming up. I'm not sure. Oh, we've been told eight minutes left. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you one more thing about the Bob Graham round. You've had an attempt, is that right? Correct, yes. Tell me about it. Oh, right, well, it was September. Um, and that was mainly because just trying to fit in with our support crew, trying to get everybody um, there when we could. Yeah. And it was just a, a horrendous day on reflection. We maybe shouldn't have set off. But when you're in Keswick, the, the mountain forecast, was, you know, pretty brutal. Um, in Keswick, in the afternoon, people were playing football and cricket. It was yeah, a magical yeah. day. <laughs> and then we headed off up to Skidor, um, and we just got blown up Skidor. So that didn't feel too bad because the wind was mm. pushing us up. And then at the top, before I knew it, we were all linking arms, just trying to kind of hang on for a dear life. And um, oh. and I've done that leg so many times, but we came off going to Calvert, missed the path, and just were wandering around in all these kind of heather and bracken for ages. But that was because it kind of a bit of a ball, so the weather was fine there. Calvert's not the biggest of summits, so that was okay. Um, and Castro wasn't too bad. You're looking at our GPS, though, we had a kind of crazy snake trying to find the summit. But then... It was going to Helvellyn that um, the weather just got so bad. Uh, we knew kind of elevation wise, we had another hundred feet to go to climb. So it was only going to get windier. And we were, there was five or six of us uh, and we were literally on our hands and knees. And it was, it was just crazy. But this is yeah. what was good. I, you know, I don't look back, I, not, not once I look back and think, I, well, we could have done it. We could have pushed on. I, I've, ne I've never kind of mourned it like that. We, no. But what was good with, having knowledge of the recce we just knew we just got to turn turn back we'll go to a place called sticks pass and we'll drop straight down and uh yeah ha having that kind of the, the, the recce knowledge but my goodness me I, sometimes i i try i talk to the guys who we, we were up there with thinking was it that bad and it was just horrendous we're all all of us kind of 40 50 year old just on our hands and knees thinking, what the hell, what the hell? Questioning what life choices. I've you, done that. You, you, I've you, been there. You're going up to Helvellyn and there was just this kind of black shadow to your left and the wind was kind of hitting us from the right. So it was, we were like going <laughs> off the edge. It was like, no, no, no. It wasn't to... your time, but no. I, you're going to try again and that yeah. learning will be invaluable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully. And I guess you're just going to kind of wait, see, see what happens in the world. Well, yeah, we've, we've penciled in, we've put our um, entry uh, for fifth, it's the first weekend of June, but we, we, you know, we might not be able to get over a recce or anything like that, but that's, you know, we know the course, so I'm not so bothered about that. Um, and we've just got to try and get fit locally. <laughs> and that's, that's as simple as Have you got some good hills around you? Can well, on our YouTube channel, we've got the 17 Hills Challenge, a nature reserve near us called Castle Eden Dean, and um, they're not long hills. That's the only problem mm, with the lakes. Mm. Um, you know, you get some, you could be going up for an hour, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, we can't replicate that where we live. Even you can't really travel to the moors, but if we could, you, those hills aren't long enough either. Uh, but it is what it is, I think. It's funny, I listened to another podcast the other week and um, somebody asked this question, what do you, what can you do if you don't live anywhere where there's hills? And Jason Coop, the host of that podcast, he just said, "Trump fitness trumps everything. So get yourself fit. <laughs> and that's as kind of good as you can get. And that's that's where we're at, unfortunately. But fingers crossed. So it's the rest of the world. The rest of the world. You're in a good place. You've got yeah. something to aim for. Yeah. Well, Gary, I really look forward to uh, chatting to you two some more, learning about a bit more about your running and aspirations and all things like that. Thank you so much for agreeing to um, to help me out on the podcast and no be the technology whiz and uh, keeping everything moving forward. We're really grateful. And um, Tim, you can come back on now. Oh, okay. I enjoyed that chat. You, you even let Gary get some words in, which is good. <laughs> I think Gary can hold his own. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> did my, look my a little bit nervous. Uh, 
kind of was a match for you, Eddie, on the chat. <laughs> it's all good training. It's all good I never training. know where to look on Zoom. I've got three windows and the camera up above them. I feel like my this eyes. is you just look at yourself, Gary. That's what I do. Just look at myself going, God, look at those cheekbones. Should have gone into modeling. Should have gone into modeling. Anything lined up, you guys, for next week? Anything exciting training wise? I need to go uh, and do another long run for me. Maybe not, maybe just, you know, do your lunges, whatever you do at CrossFit, and then and then give yourself a little rest and then the run. God bless you. Thanks for that advice. <laughs> what about yourself? You, Anything? Right? I've got to, I've got this, I've got to just keep going with the volume and we've got snow back. Do you know what we had over the weekend? We had the whole of the mountains covered in Sahara sand that blew on this wind that blew right across over the top of France and back down again. And the whole of the Alps were covered in yellow sand and it was like this yellow glowing stuff. So I had to put my skiing on hold because I didn't want to ruin my skis because I'm precious like that. But I'm back on the, I'm back on the, I'll be doing lots of skiing next week, hopefully, and trying to stay alive in half term. Yes. You, Gary, oh, Hills. Yeah. Can I just yeah, say, Eddie, that, that, hey, sorry, Eddie, that's the first time you've mentioned half term. I didn't know it was. Do you know that my kids are on half term for two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Gary. What am I doing? Well, uh, tonight um, it's either a threshold run or an interval session. I'm not too sure what we're going to do. Um, I'll do a weighted bestie hike on Sunday. Um, cool. You know, it's, uh, I'm trying to do. I can't... I'm trying to do what like a le less running, and I thought uh, this weighted hike comes up quite Very a lot. Good. Um, so we do a little warm up jog, and then we just go up and down these two hills like a pendulum, backwards and forwards for two hours. Um, I mean, that's perfect, Bob Graham training, because well, there's min minimum running, maximum hiking. Well, if we could do the Bob Graham round, the pace that we do this hike, then I'd be very happy. <laughs> cool. Right. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thanks for fitting this in. Well, the kids are on half term for me this thank week. Uh, I'm Eddie Sutton. And I'm Gary Thwaites. Oh, and I'm Tim. And this is Run to the Hills. Perfection. Cool.